Sports Card Podcast, where we tackle the hobby's hottest topics in depth to help you navigate the sports card landscape and enjoy the hobby we all love. Here's your host, John Newman. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Hobby Quick Hits. Probably going to be a little on the shorter side today. That's nothing wrong with that. Some of you probably are applauding uh, as I say that. But uh, uh, I'm going to talk about, I've, I've titled the show Marination. And no, that has nothing to do with food or cooking. Although I'm, I'm a foodie and uh, I use the term marination. It's, it's obviously I didn't invent the term marination. But I, I've kind of brought it over to the, my hobby side and it's kind of caught on. I've had other people uh, use it and, and give me credit and say, "Hey, John, I'm you know I'm I'm taking your advice. I'm gonna I'm gonna marinate this card and uh, has nothing to do with soaking your uh, your card in Montreal steak seasoning or anything like that. But what I mean by it is if if you're someone that sells and buys cards uh, as I do and and many others do, it's the act of of either buying a card or purchasing you know wax purchasing anything hobby related a sealed wax box a set a card um opening something and pulling something and knowing hey i'm not going to do anything with this for a while i'm going to eventually probably sell it or move it you know or list it somewhere for sale but right now i'm just going to kind of put it away not do anything with it to to kind of you know sell it now wouldn't make a lot of sense now again to each your own hobby your way all that stuff i like to say it's all true as far as i'm concerned but uh, you know i've i've come to to do this sort of sitting on something or sort of putting something away and almost forgetting about it um I, when i say recently probably in the last 10 years, maybe a little bit longer. You know, when I had my store in the store days or when I was doing even shows, I mean, as soon as I got something, you know, it went out in the showcase. Or if I was doing shows, I, I'd put it on uh, display at the show. And, you know, just from doing this long enough, I guess, just stuff, you know, you, you learn some things. And I just learned that sometimes, like, to sell now is, is you know, yeah, could you sell it now? Sure, any anything can sell, but when you're trying to you know hit that ceiling price, do you know do the best you can for yourself? Sometimes putting something away and not being too quick to sell can be beneficial financially. And listen, it's not a hundred. You know, it's like anything, right? You can lose too. You you marinate a card, a set, a, a wax box. And something happens where the value of that drops out or that player, you know, career doesn't pan out or they get hurt. And I mean, you can lose. There are no guarantees in this hobby, as you uh, should know. I mean, you know, we were talking about guarantees. I just opened a box of Bowman Heritage, uh, you know, the online exclusive product. It says right on the box, one, uh, one autograph guaranteed per box i didn't get the auto so there you go even when there is a guarantee in the hobby nothing's guaranteed i the box was tremendous besides the no auto i i don't know if it was a hot box but i got extra colors and and parallels and 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 so i i've sent the form in the tops tops has a here's a little uh tidbit if you ever get an issue like that with tops go to tops websites they have a form that you can uh fill out and send in that uh, you didn't get your guaranteed hit. So I got that form uh, on file with, with Tops. We'll see what they do uh, pertaining to it. Uh, I, you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But overall, the box was great. But, you know, I, I went off on a little tangent there. But I use that as an example say there's no guarantees. And even with marination, as I like to call it, there are no guarantees, too. What do I base when I do that on a, on a, a player? I do it mostly with... Uh, a player, the cards of a player. Uh, I do it with wax, but wax is really more just uh, because wax usually goes up as time goes on, as, as more people 
uh, start opening it. Breakers start buying more. Rip it open. There's less sealed, and the sealed price goes up. That's just you know simple economics 101, supply and demand. No, no, no real super you know thinking there. But when it comes to players, which I do a, a lot in that uh, category as well, there is a little more science uh, behind that. And obviously, you know, the player's performance and is, is going to be a factor on what those cards values are worth. So I have to look at each player. If it's a player that I think is, you know, going to be better as time goes on, and that's the guessing game, right? You know, but it's in, it can be an educated guessing game too. You know, I listen to a, a lot of minor league podcasts. I follow the minor leagues. In football, I'm a huge college football guy. I, uh, I see these games and players and performances before they get to the NFL. Then I read, you know, the NFL scouting report. Being a, a huge Steeler fan, I'm really into the NFL draft. You know, when some guy gets picked in the fourth round and you say, who's that? Never heard of him. I can tell you about him. And that might be the difference uh, there. And so I do that sort of legwork. And so when it comes to putting a player away, marinating a player, there's factors for me. Is, you know, he at his sort of full capacity? You know, I'll, I'll use an example. I pull a nice Mike Trout card. Mike Trout is arguably the number one player in the game. Um, and he's, he's still got a career. He's probably got another eight, ten years of, of ball playing ahead of him. Don't get me wrong, but... You know, there's no secret there with Mike Trout. So that's someone, if I'm selling something and it's a Trout card, I'm not marinating necessarily uh, Mike Trout. Now, again, certain key cards come into the play here. You know, maybe if I got a, a Trout update rookie, great, you know, some graded ones, maybe I'll, I'll say I'm not going to sell those now. Those are going to appreciate. But, it, you know, so there's a lot of factors. What? What kind of card is it uh, and all that? Well, who is it? Um, but so, you know, Trout, if I get a normal sort of Trout release, uh, uh, you know, a, a real short printed insert or something numbered, I'm probably going to, you know, list that fairly quickly. If it's uh, I acquire a, a Trout graded rookie, uh, I'm probably, depends, again, on, on the situation, I'm probably just going to put that in my graded box and just let that let that sit there that that's something that's going to be worth more later on and i'm not you know i don't do this full time anymore so i i don't i don't i'm not in a rush to sell something to pay bills or overhead so i have that luxury you know one of the reasons you know i, I talked about this on another episode of hobby quick hits about getting back into a store and what would be the situation you know, I almost, you know, part of the reason I almost don't want to, I know it sounds crazy, is I don't want to feel like I have to sell things before I want to. And I think with the store, and depending on every situation different, you get overhead, you know, you don't want to hold a lot of stuff back. It's one of my regrets from my store days the first time. I had a store from 92 to 97. One of them, I made sort of two mistakes. Some, some things I, I held on to when I should have sold them. And they obviously uh, aren't worth what they did. And then other ones, you know, I sold 150 Derek Jeter, not all at one time, but in a two-year span from 93, 94, maybe a little bit into 95. I sold, you know, 150 SP Jeter rookies uh, rather cheaply compared to what we know that card is now. My, my philosophy then was he's a Yankee, but I don't think he's as great as people make him out. He's a good-looking Yankee shortstop, and 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 I, I don't know if he's gonna you know be a great great player. And so I was kind of like selling him for forty fifty bucks at the time. He really hadn't even done nothing yet, so I was just kind of thinking he was overhyped, overrated, and, and sell these things now. And as we know here in twenty twenty one, that card is is insane. And so yeah, I'd like to have a mulligan there, but you, you can't. And uh, that's, you know, those are the things you learn from. So uh, it's a two-way street. Sometimes you hold on to something uh, too long. I did that 
uh, plenty of times, and sometimes you sell something too quick or too low, as I mentioned with the Jeter rookie. So, you know, I gave you a Trout, for example, and I'll, I'll use another guy I have a lot of stuff of. I really do. And uh, that's uh, Luis Robert, uh, the outfielder from the White Sox, 5 tool player, a guy that's been mentioned, Mike Trout's mentioned in his scouting report, you know, uh, similar to Mike Trout, at least that's what the scouts say. I know he had a bad six weeks to end the season uh, last year, but uh, he's a guy I like. I've, I've kind of, on that dip, I've bought a bunch of stuff. For me to sell now, now sort of dip. Now, I know his stuff still brings good money, but listen, it's still bringing good money on sort of a not so great year, sort of a lukewarm year. And if you believe in him, and I do, and I know others do too, to sell or enlist him now doesn't make a lot of sense unless you just need the money quick, right? And, and that might be the case for you. Every situation is different. We're in a pandemic, maybe something, you know, a car broke down, uh, you had a, a big bill, you know, you lost uh, employment. Every scenario is different. I don't blame anyone. Again, I wouldn't blame you anyway. It's your car. It's, you know, hobby your way, as I always say. But for me, you know, who, you know, who can kind of just put those in a, a box and just kind of let them sit there, I'm willing to wait until Luis Robert, you know, performs like I think he's going to. And then those cards are obviously going to, the ROI on those cards is going to probably, who knows, to what level. 100, you know, 100, 200, 300 per, times what they are now. And, uh, you know, I bought them at a level. I pulled a lot of them myself. So, you know, you, you know, you only have what you kind of paid into the box kind of level. But even the ones I bought as individual cards... Uh, I got at what I consider a, a great level, a low ceiling. And so to sit and wait, not a big deal for me. But every, again, everyone is in a different situation. You know, again, you know, uh, I have an adult son. I don't have small kids. And my overhead is is not bad in comparison maybe to, to other people. So what works for me may not work for you, but what works for me may work for you. May, you may listen to this episode and say, yeah, I, I, you know, I like to do that. The other thing I may, like, you know, you know, I mentioned two guys that are, you know, uh, playing with, with Trout and Luis Robert. Another thing I do with, with, when it comes to the, the term marination, if I think a card is, is or a set or some item is just too low right now, like this, this should be going for more money, and these prices are too low. I'm going to buy that and put it away because I think there's going to be an increase coming. Let me give you. A, I'm trying to think of an example to give you a, a product that uh, I'm doing. I'll give you a couple. So, you know, Montgomery Club 582. They do those those sets. You know, I don't know about this year coming 2021, but I think the the first couple years. Uh, when the, that club membership was sort of limited, I don't think there's a ton of those sets out there. And then people are, are opening them, breaking them up. And so I've been buying some of those sets and just uh, putting them away. Another set that I, I absolutely uh, love is the 87 Minor Leagues. 87 Bellington, Bellingham Mariners, Grippy's first card. Still very affordable. You can get the set anywhere from 125 bucks to 175 bucks. What a lot of people do is buy the sets, rip them open, and you know they come actually shrink wrapped and sealed. But many will open them up and send if the Griffey is in good shape. And this is a card that you know that shrink wrap kind of affects the corners. They have some centering issues. This is just kind of a uh, you know, a, a local company that printed them. And so if you get a, a set and you open it up and that Griffey's in great shape um, and you submit it and it gets a 9 or 10, you're going to get 600 to to 1000 bucks. And, uh, you know, a lot of people do that. I've What I've done is I've got actually, I've got one that's uh, uh, in the PSA for grading, uh, really nice shape. I, I think it has a shot at at least a 9, if not uh, higher. And, you know, other times, I have other sets here that are still uh, closed and sealed that I just won't open them. I'm going to keep them. Uh, I like the, the fact that they're factory sealed. 
uh, you know, and uh, I think they're undervalued. I mean, this is uh, arguably one of the greatest players uh, to play the game. You know, he's never been linked or mentioned uh, to the steroid era, and he's played during it. And if you look at his numbers, if he did that all natural, that just to me makes him even a greater player than we think uh, he is. And I think some of Griffey's stuff is well undervalued still. You know, you can get autograph cards from him, you know, on, on a little, just slightly over a hundred bucks. Uh, and I think, again, you get some of those, probably put them away. I think they're going to uh, increase in value. So to me, this Bellingham Mariner set is, is, is undervalued significantly. I saw the Mariano Rivera, Tampa Bay Yankees, I uh, actually had five of them, uh, and I sold my last one last year for you know almost five six hundred bucks. Not great, it just the the raw, and uh, you know I sold the other four for probably two three four hundred in those ranges, more than the Griffey. And listen, Mariano's uh, probably the greatest reliever of all time, but we know pitchers and hitters and what you know who traditionally card wise. Uh, is, is more valuable. And, uh, you know, if you ask most people, especially a non-Yankee fan, you can have a Griffey or you can have a, a Mariano. You know, most people, a good percentage, are going to take the Griffey. So, to me, that Griffey-Bellingham set is, is undervalued. So that's a set I buy, put away. Sometimes I don't rip it open, uh, rip a one or two open just to see what condition the Griffey's in, uh, maybe to submit for grading, um, and so a lot, you know, I know some other people are doing that too. So, you know, when it comes to marination, kind of putting the, the, the bow on this episode, it, it can be on, to me, it can be on wax. It can be on, on sets. It can be on individual plays. It can be even on a segment of a card, like with the trout example I gave some trout. As soon as I get them, I'll just turn around and list them. Other trouts I get, you know, graded rookies. I'm going to probably just put away for now because I just think later on they're going to just be significantly more and I'm willing to wait for that. I'm in no rush. I don't, you know, while I'm doing, I'm a legitimate sales tax business, I don't have a store. I don't have overhead. My overhead is my home mortgage. And and again, you know, that's one of the reasons I'm really hesitant to ever really go and open a, 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 a brick and mortar store. And I love brick and mortar store. And they're making a comeback. And to all you guys out there this year, the last year or two of open, man, that's, that is awesome stuff. Thumbs up for me. But I'm just, you know, speaking for myself here, I actually like the art of marination, if you will. I like doing that. And I feel like if I went into a brick and mortar again, I wouldn't be able to do that to the level I do it now. And I sort of, maybe it's a little superstition, and I don't want to, you know, upset the apple cart, if you will. I don't want to change kind of what I'm doing. 2020 was an absolute incredible year uh, for Newman Sports Card side of the house. And uh, 2021 has started off uh, very good. I, I don't know if I can expect a repeat performance of 2020 but uh if the early indications are correct it's going to be going to be close or similar we got a long way to go yet but so i wanted to talk about the term i use a lot marination i hope you enjoyed this episode if you have any questions uh pertaining to marination or techniques or or strategies i use again this is just one person's thoughts and opinion here but if you have any questions i'd be more than happy uh, to answer them if you differ in opinion or you you think john you're nuts you're wrong well, let me know too that's the that's you know i i I'm, my door's open to both sides of that uh aisle so uh with that being said we're gonna wrap this episode up i appreciate you listening to hobby quick hits here on the sports car nation platform hobby quick hits on wednesday Sports Card Nation on Friday. So we'll see you uh, next time. Thanks for listening. Take care. A quick word from one of our national sponsors, but right behind that we'll be giving out our social medias. Feel free to reach out to us. Let us know what you think or if you have any questions. Uh, And uh, like I said, uh, we'll we'll wrap it up uh, after that. Hey, folks. Thanks for listening to the show. Wanted to give out our social media links where you can follow the show even when you're not listening to it. On Twitter, we are at Hits Hobby, 
at Hits Hobby, H-I-T-S-H-O-B-B-Y. On Instagram, we are at Hobby Quick Hits Podcast, at Hobby Quick Hits Podcast, all one word. Our website is www.sportscardnation.net. Look for the link to Hobby Quick Hits. You'll find us there. And you can always text us on our text line, area code 315 491 Zero two, three nine. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli.